Hey, 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 everybody. How's it going? It's me, your boy Waddles, and welcome back to the Minecraft Guide, episode number nine. Now, today's episode is, is going to be magical, but first, we have a stream recap to do. On Thursday, December 26th, we streamed from the world again. It was really, really fun. Big shout out to those of you who came over to it. That's epic. This time on stream, we went down into the caves. The stream was about an hour and a half. In that amount of time, we got zero deaths and all of this stuff right here, including seven beautiful, beautiful diamonds. Now, I would say that's a pretty successful run, but eh, there's more work to be done. So the caves that we were working in got pretty intense, and eventually we decided that it was time to call it a day. So I dug a staircase up to the surface. It's somewhere over there. I don't really know where. Uh, and basically, we have to go back down there and finish the job later because there's a lot more cave to light up. But maybe that's a job for next time because today we have something else, something bigger. In today's episode, we're talking all about enchanting, and actually, in the next one, we'll be talking about it as well. Now, enchanting is a really big game mechanic, and it's insanely useful. You should definitely take advantage of it. Enchanting can be used to buff pretty much any and all equipment in Minecraft. So you name something, a sword, a pickaxe, a shovel, it can probably be enchanted. Now, there are a bunch of enchantments in Minecraft. I don't have an exact number. There's, there's a lot, and usually more enchantments are added with each game update. We're not about to list every single enchantment and define it. No, that would be really boring. We're, we're just going to talk about the enchantments as we get them. I'll, I'll talk about what they do, so that'll save some time. But what we are going to talk about is how you should get started with enchanting. So before enchanting, you're going to need to get your hands on five things, five shiny blue things, five diamonds. Three of those diamonds are going to go to your very first diamond pickaxe. How special, this is a big moment. And then the other two, they're going to go to an enchantment table. Now to make an enchantment table, we'll need to go really deep down into our world, probably, to find obsidian. Obsidian can only be mined with the diamond pickaxe, so that's what that is for. Now, uh, we have obsidian way down there. I know it for a fact, but it's really annoying to go up and down. So I think this is going to be the perfect time to replace all of these, uh, these normal blocks with staircases so we can just run up and down whenever we need to. I definitely don't recommend using your new diamond pickaxe for something like this if you're doing anything before enchanting the thing. Uh, you just don't use it. Keep using iron because you want to save the durability on your diamond pickaxe. These are the best pickaxes in the game, and they're expensive if you don't have a lot of diamonds. So, yeah, don't use the thing up before you enchant. Save it for the obsidian, and then you're going to want to enchant it. But now it's time for me to staircase. It's a got a lot of blocks to place, so I'll be right back. Should be pretty easy, and we're also going to definitely make sure it's nice and bright because a bright staircase is probably the best staircase. Staircase check, now obsidian. So when I was branch mining back in episode five, I actually found some obsidian. The obsidian is right up here. This stuff is actually in a cave system that we were exploring, probably in episode three, but hey, didn't finish mining the ores, so you, you never saw a thing. Once you find obsidian, the first thing that you should do is break a block right next to it and place a water bucket down because often there's more lava underneath obsidian and spoiler alert, obsidian is not the most fun block to mine in the game. I mean, uh, yeah, eh, look at this. This, it takes some time. Obsidian is actually the block that takes the longest to mine in Minecraft, even with the best pickaxe in the game. Now, I recommend getting four obsidian and then bailing out on this operation because you can come back later with an enchanted pickaxe and hopefully have a little less pain when mining this stuff. So, here we go. At three obsidian and then the fourth one is hiding over there. Now, with four obsidian in hand, it's time to go back up to the surface to get the final ingredient for an enchanting table. To make an enchanting table, you'll need four obsidian, two diamonds, and a book. To make a book, you need one piece of leather and three pieces of paper. Now, to improve your enchantment setup, you'll also need to have 15 bookshelves. To make a bookshelf, you need three books and six wood. So, start farming a lot of trees and start farming sugarcane and leather. Now, thankfully, we have these beautiful farms that have been working out really, really well. 
In between episodes, I've been stocking up on this stuff, harvesting it over and over again, waiting for it to grow. And uh, now we're at a place where we should be set for today. We definitely have more than enough sugarcane and with this final harvest of this farm over here, we'll finally have enough leather as well. So cows, it's time to get to work. Thank you very much, very helpful, very nice, so kind of you. Oh, wait, you shouldn't have. And uh, yes, we have more than enough leather, which is really nice. And it's gonna be time to switch over to beef soon too. So, 46 leather, check, a bunch of sugarcane, check, lots of wood as well, check, and then all of the other materials that we need, also check. But to actually enchant, you'll also need to have lapis, so plan on collecting some of that as well. Now, I know exactly where I'd like to build the enchantment setup. The spot is right across the river. Now today, I'm not going to tell you too much about it. We'll talk about what I'm going to do with it in the next episode, and we'll actually transform the thing. But uh, for today, all you need to know is that it will be over in the desert, sitting right here, raised up off of the ground two blocks, like, like that. E let's move it back a little bit, actually. All right, so now let's go ahead and make all of our paper and then make a bunch of books. Now eh, we need the enchantment table. This is pretty expensive, but compared to this next step, that was actually nothing. Bookshelves, ooh, these are these are painful to make. Even late game, ouch, that's 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 a lot of supplies. So, an enchantment table. I, I'm sure you guys know what it looks like. This is the thing right here. It makes a really cool nightstand and of course, an amazing uh, en enchantment table. Inside of it, we have this UI. The slot over here is for whatever you're enchanting and then right next to it, you'll place either one, two, or three payment lapis. This stuff will be consumed. Over here are the enchantments that the enchantment table is currently offering. So we have one, two, and then eventually, as we start adding bookshelves around this thing, we'll see a third one appear right down here. And that brings us to the bookshelf. Bookshelves are an essential part of any enchantment setup if you actually want to get good enchantments, which I mean, why wouldn't you? Bookshelves basically control how good the enchantments that you'll get out of an enchantment table will be. As you add more bookshelves around this thing, the enchantment levels, so these numbers over here, the one and the four, will go up. That is generally a good thing. A higher enchantment level means usually a better enchantment. Now these bookshelves need to be placed in a particular way. The bookshelf should be placed one block away from the enchantment table with nothing in between the bookshelf and the table. So that means even something like a torch, these torches won't be able to be here. They will actually ruin the whole bookshelf reaching the enchantment table thing. Why? I, I don't know, does it make sense? No, not really, especially with a torch, but uh, it's, it's just how it is. And dang it, <laughs> I wasted wood. Oh man, it's not a big deal though. We have a lot of wood will just boom it never happened now these bookshelves can be placed all the way around the enchantment table that means i could place them over here too and you can actually place them in the corners they will still reach the enchantment table but i i think we're gonna do something a little fun and, and make these bookshelves randomized now the bookshelves can be on the same layer as the enchantment table or one layer above one layer above will work as well once you get to 15 bookshelves like this and uh, so long as they aren't blocking the enchantment table your enchantment levels will be maxed out. If you keep adding bookshelves beyond this point, really nothing will happen. You won't change the enchantments inside of the table. They won't get better anymore. They, it'll just maybe look better. It'll be all for aesthetics beyond this point. So once we have maxed out the bookshelves around this enchantment table, that means our enchantment levels will be the best they possibly could be. So seven, nine, and then 30. 30 is the highest enchantment level. Now, when you enchant a tool, it won't cost these level amounts over here, it'll cost these over here. So one level for this level seven enchantment, two levels for this level nine one, or three for this level 30 enchantment. Generally, you want to take the best enchantment possible unless you're not happy with it. Maybe if we already had Silk Touch, I, I wouldn't take this and I would roll the enchantment over. We'll talk about that in a minute though, but Silk Touch. Oh boy, Silk Touch is one of the best enchantments in the game, so you already know I'm going to take this. So as soon as I take this enchantment, we'll lose three levels, we'll lose this three lapis, and this boy will be enchanted. What do we got? Oh my gosh. <laughs> Efficiency 4, Unbreaking 3, Silk Touch. That is an amazing, amazing pickaxe. Oh wow, we hit the lottery today, elites. That's, hey, that's amazing. That's really, really good. 
So since these are all brand new enchantments, we'll go ahead and go over them really quick. Unbreaking 3 basically makes your tool last longer. With Unbreaking 3, our pickaxe has the highest chance possible to lose zero durability when breaking a block. So right now, we have a 1556 durability. If we place this cobblestone down and break it, we still have 1556 durability. It did not go down at all, and that is a really good thing. Efficiency makes your pickaxe work faster, so take note of how fast that is. That's really, really good. We have Efficiency 4, which is the highest efficiency level you can get from an enchantment table. We could actually combine this Efficiency 4 pickaxe with an Efficiency 4 book or another Efficiency 4 pickaxe to get Efficiency 5, though, and that's something we'll definitely do. Then, Silk Touch. Silk Touch is amazing. With Silk Touch, you can pick up any block exactly how it is, so grass block right here with a normal pickaxe i mean i know you wouldn't use this but you'll get a dirt block with a silk touch one you will get the grass block itself which is really really good especially if you're trying to spread grass somewhere like maybe over into the desert for a secret future build so yeah wow we hit the lottery this is really really lucky i am happy really really happy but Let's say you weren't so happy with whatever enchantment you have right here. Then there's something else that you can do. So to do this, I recommend having a bunch of stone shovels. Stone shovels are usually the way to go early on. Place a stone shovel inside of the enchantment table, then place a single lapis and take this first enchantment, whatever it is. Then go ahead and put your tool back in and you should see a brand new enchantment in there. We just rolled over our enchantment seed. An enchantment seed is basically what enchantment you will be getting. Now there are a few ways to change your enchantment seed. Method one is doing exactly what we just did. Enchant something and then you'll have brand new enchantments up for offer. Another method to change your enchantment seed has to do with the bookshelves. So remember how I said bookshelves control the enchantments? Well, yeah, that's definitely the case. They also affect your enchantment seed. If we were to remove a bunch of these bookshelves, our enchantments would go down and therefore the enchantment offer should change. Now, I'm not going to do that because there's really no point in doing that. But yeah, you can change the enchantments by removing the bookshelves. Going to a different enchantment table with the same amount of bookshelves is not going to work. You will still have the same exact enchantments offered, so yeah, don't waste your time running somewhere else trying to get a new enchantment. It, it just doesn't work like that. Now, enchantment setup bonuses or other things that you could put by your setup. The first thing is definitely a grindstone. If you're using the first method to roll your enchantments over, you can place a grindstone and disenchant that thing that you enchanted with a junk enchantment to have that stone shovel back. You'll get a little bit of experience in return too, but not as much as you used to enchant the thing in the first place, uh, at least probably. Then you can repeat the process over and over again. You can enchant it again, go back over here, disenchant that stone shovel, and then repeat, and you get the point. You can keep doing that as many times as you'd like. Now, another thing that you could do to roll your enchantments over is enchant a book you could have a bunch of random enchanted books but I don't have a lot of books to do that with so yeah just keep that in mind you don't need to use a stone shovel you could definitely use a book and maybe take a level 30 enchant that would work too so grindstones are the first optional thing that is good to have around your enchantment setup the next thing is definitely a storage chest inside of that chest you may want to place your lapis and then your junk thing that you're using to roll enchantments over those things should always stay by the setup so you have them ready now uh last but not least the other thing that you should have by your enchantment setup if you want it to be really good at least is an experience farm now we can't do that today uh, because there's nothing over here that we have that we could use for experience and honestly typically that will be the case usually what you'll do is you'll move your enchantment setup over to the experience farm instead of the other way around so eventually once we set up some sort of spawner farm maybe a skeleton farm We'll probably put an enchantment set up by the thing so we can get the levels that we need to enchant and then turn around and enchant right away. That definitely speeds up the whole process. But I think for the most part, those are the basics of enchanting. So iron pickaxe, you're going to live there for now too. And diamond pickaxe, hello. Now we're going to need to make an anvil soon too so we can name this pickaxe. So pickaxe names, throw them down below. Maybe if I can remember, I'll leave a pinned comment. But... I think, yeah, that basically does it for the basics of enchanting. So that's our setup for today. 
Now it's time to switch gears and do one other thing that we actually didn't do in the last episode. That thing has to do with the map and some spruce wood. So, compass, there we go, and then paper, there we go as well, and then the cartography table, this thing is going to have to come with me. We also are going to want to grab this top map right here. We're going to change this whole thing in a minute when we make it back to our base. Now, last episode, we went and explored, and that was super fun and cool, but I forgot to do one important thing. That important thing is get spruce wood. For the next build, the enchantment setup thing, we're going to need spruce wood. Spruce wood is also one of my favorite wood types in the game, so we should probably have it. So, uh, that means we need to head over to the mountain that we saw in the distance last episode and get the spruce wood from there. Then we'll come back and actually maybe renovate both of the roofs that we've done so far. So, our starter house and the barn. Because birch wood, it does look nice on top of the builds, but it's not my first choice. It never was, honestly. The first choice was always spruce wood, but we just didn't have any at the time. And we're bringing the map to start mapping the world, of course. I mean, why not? If we're going to go over here, we might as well map it in because eventually I'd like to have a map wall and that eventually should be hopefully sooner than last time. Yeah, that would be really, really cool. So I think by now we should be on the new map. Let's go ahead and take a look. Yep, new map. And now it's expansion time. We need that fully zoomed out map, of course. So one, two and three and then finally four and are we good we're good we're good to go so spruce trees uh, right over there that should be good no clue what biome this mountain would be we have sand right next to snow uh, because minecraft but yeah that guy right there that's what we're going for e but how do i get up on top of this thing this is quite the steep mountain yeah, this is not as good as Mount Waddle, but almost in Savannah Village. Oh, Savannah Zombie Village. Wow, no way. That's a sidetrack. Eh, we're going to avoid that for now, but oh my gosh. I'm not going to forget that. Wow, this is the best seed in the world. I should have brought banner making stuff. I guess I could get the sheep around here, but wow, we're going to come back to that. That's, eh, that's pretty amazing. Those are usually rare. Wow. Hey, so like seven villages around us and uh, an abandoned one too. Wow, not bad at all. That's pretty cool. Hey, but it is, I think, unfortunately, kind of staircase because there is no way up this mountain. But uh, thankfully, we got this speed pickaxe to help us get up there really quick. This is definitely what I'm talking about. And maybe this is also the best starter pickaxe that i've gotten in a world this is an amazing start but spruce tree i'm sorry you're, you're being relocated now spruce wood ah we meet again my old friend and now we wait and oh you can use snow to x-ray this is new this is news oh my gosh <laughs> uh, interesting Hey, three saplings from one tree, that's not bad. So I think we're set. That that should be enough to get us started on a spruce farm. Now it's time to, I guess, fill in a small corner of this map and get back home because I've got a little bit more work to do to finish up the episode. And I don't know if I found this outpost yet, but this is getting absurd. There's another outpost over here. I seriously don't remember if we found this one. They're all starting to blend together, but... Uh, yeah, that's like another outpost. I think I'm being told to make like an outpost farm or something by the game. Like, wow, if I didn't have a goal right now, I'd be checking that out. But the loot from those things usually isn't the best anyways. But, oh my gosh. <laughs> Seriously, the best seed that I've ever seen. We're, we're going to do a seed reveal next episode for sure. So, now that we're back home, here's the final look at these builds before I transform them. We've got the barn over there with birch, and then we have our starter house right here also with birch. I am going to try and pretty much leave the build intact, like, like the roof and the shape and everything. Just literally change the color of these things. When I come back, these will be all brand new and probably much, much better looking. So... I will, uh, yeah, uh, <laughs> I'll be right back.
And just a little bit of time later, we have two brand new, beautiful-er-looking buildings. So, behind me right now is the much-improved barn, if I do say so myself. I don't know. I think this looks so, so much better. Birchwood is just... It's really not my first choice for a roof, and when I use it on a roof, I don't know. Usually, I don't like it as much, but I don't know. Definitely let me know what you think about it down in the comments below. I also did add that back beam on there to break the back section up a little bit. I, I think that works. I would add another one, but unfortunately, our whole window thing kind of is in the way, so if I was going to do that, I'd have to move this over. Not a problem, but yeah, so I decided to just skip it for now. If you think I should add it, definitely tell me. Matter of fact, I'll put a poll on screen. Should I move this thing over towards the middle and add another beam, or should I not? Definitely vote in that thing. Then, uh, over here, we have the much improved starter house. I think this looks a million times better as well. It's really the spruce wood. It, it just levels everything up so, so much. Now I'm trying to decide if I want to change the porch. I, I don't think I do, though. I, I think that would maybe be a little too much a, of this whole brown tone, so... I'm thinking maybe the birch wood stays, but still kind of don't know. Inside, we have this really cool looking ceiling now because the birch wood actually shows through. I really, really like how that looks, so I'm going to leave it as is, but I think that's actually everything for this episode of the Minecraft Guide. I think we've broken down enchanting pretty well, and then the buildings look a lot better, in, in my opinion. I think spruce wood is probably going to become our default roof block, or at least an essential building material, and birch wood, well, unfortunately, that stuff will probably be retired. Now, I do need to harvest that field, and I think I'm missing a bee again, which is really, really sad, but... I don't really want to harvest it. I, I'm going to have to, though, sooner or later, but maybe not today. Anyways, though, that's all I've got for today. If you guys enjoyed it, drop a like. Remember to hit that subscribe button. All of my links are down in the description. If you want the episodes early, Patreon, as always, and a happy almost new year. Again, remember, stream this Thursday, 3 p.m. Eastern Time. It'll actually be the first stream of the new year. But until next time, I am your boy, Waddles, and I'll see you in the next one. Stay cool. Goodbye, everyone.